Welcome to another exciting edition of Plank of the Week. With me, Mike Graham, it's Talk TV, and I'm delighted to say that today uh, we have got Esther Kraku returning uh, for another triumphant mission uh, to find who has been the biggest Plank of the Week, and Kevin O'Sullivan, our very own uh, Talk TV host as well. So, Esther, we've got to get right to it. Let's yeah. start with your first Plank of the Week. I think everyone knew this was coming, but it's obviously Boris. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who else could it possibly be, right? What for this time? Well, that interesting picture of him at the not party yes. with a group of people having drinks at what looks very much like a party. And Does I, it look like a party I to you? I don't, well, I, I mean, doesn't see, it doesn't look like a party to me, Kev. Well, I, I mean, you've got Grant Shapps conceding it's definitely a, a leaving event, yeah. but not a party. <laughs> We're in one of those a sort of event. what's a sausage roll uh, exactly. situation, aren't What we? is a cake or a biscuit? Well, yeah. They're trying to define what a party is. I mean, it, that is a party. Yeah. But listen, and I'm sick to death with Partygate, like I'm everyone sick of is. All of it's it. just so, like, you know, repetitive and redundant. And yeah. with the beer gate thing, I'm just like, well, you all did it, so yes. I don't really care anymore. Yeah. However, that picture is just ridiculous. Because he, I, I genuinely think Boris didn't know the rules he set. <laughs> no. That's what amazes me. The thing is, right, this is a guy who we're told nearly died mm. as a result of this quite serious condition. Yeah. He doesn't seem to care the fact that he nearly died because he doesn't seem to worry about getting it again. I know. I think um, he needed a drink because he had a newborn. But <laughs> I think you know, most people can understand. Well, this, was a, this, was a, this was a leaving do uh, okay. for Lee Kane, the communications chief, mm -hmm. uh, who Carrie got out, rid of. ousted by Carrie. By Carrie, yeah. So, allegedly, so, so, allegedly, gentlemen. I don't gentlemen. think there's anything alleged about the, it. But the point is, the point is, there were eight people in that gathering, which is uh, against the rules, and some of them have been fined. Yeah. Now, uh, surely everybody who attended that gathering is breaking the rules. Exactly. How can only some of them be fined right. and others, i.e. Uh, E.G. Boris Johnson, not be fined? It's and weird. And apparently the police had that picture yes. for, for months. Well, they, so well, they were sitting on it. Maybe the police are the planks here because, um, you know, if, if, as, as Kevin says, if they, if they find some of the people in that picture, why wouldn't they find all of them? But, I mean, the trouble is the whole, the whole thing. I'm, a mess. I'm sick to death of all I, of it, I really. generally don't think... But I think Boris thought he was exempt because it was some sort of work bubble he's the Prime in, 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 in his in his well that no, and in, his, in his warped mind. He also thought he was exempt from uh, being uh, charged with adultery by his wife because he didn't think it applied to him. Either. Well, yeah, I, I don't think a lot of them which, which particular wife are we talking? Well, I'm not quite sure. I think all of them. <laughs> which one know. in question? I mean, he's clearly a guy who doesn't think anything applies to him. I mean, yeah. I, I think that's where we are. But what's funny? The funniest thing about it is somebody I can't remember who it was this morning suggesting that Boris actually wasn't at the event. Uh, he was just walking past and somebody <laughs> handed him a glass and he went like that. Yeah. Cheers. I know. And then could, somebody took a picture. But apparently his overriding defence is, uh, because it's number 10 Downing Street, it's not only it's his an office. place of work, yeah. it's where he lives it's as well. It's his work so bubble. That's, that's why he says he's different to the others. But you can't be saying that with a yeah, drink Yeah, I mean, like that's, that is taking like the mix. Well, listen, that's I, a party. I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I just can't be bothered. But you know the thing, I think this is what I think should happen. I think they should give back, you know, take, you know re reimburse everyone that had a fine yeah. for this. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, if this man is breaking the rules, and yeah. the rules really shouldn't well, apply to anyone else. Well, I think they should do that. Certainly. And he should apologise because yeah. if they couldn't follow the rules they set, clearly yeah. there was something wrong with the rules in the first place. Well, of course there was, and that and is the, that is the. But final... that's, that is the crux of it, and I think there should be room for humility. The good in our thing, politics. though, that Boris has done here is he has made it very sure that this will never happen again. That they will never have another lockdown. Are you sure? Have nobody... you heard of monkeypox? Yeah. Monkeypox is not a problem. Pro trust me. In fact, I was going to make monkeypox one of the planks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, the World well, Health Organization yeah. for trying to foist upon exactly us another but, you pandemic. Know, can you imagine the next time somebody in Downing Street says, "Right, we're going to all." have a lockdown, you won't be able to go out of your house, you can only meet people four at a time. People just go, I don't think so. Yeah, Sorry. I the, think the not. The monkeypox thing is really worrying because what it confirms to me is now all over the world there are millions of people who just want to have a health scare yeah. going yeah. on all the time. I know. So this is the new COVID. Uh, whatever any doctor says, it keeps gaining momentum. There's no reason to worry about monkeypox. No. For, a, for a kickoff, we're all vaccinated against it. And it's it not doesn't the kill same. you. And it doesn't, it doesn't kill, kill you. But the, 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 the scariest bit is the people that have learnt nothing. Yeah. Right, they have been single-minded in their subservience and their obedience mm. in following a certain mainstream narrative, and they are going at it with everything they yeah. have. That's that's the scary thing. Oh, there, there are people that have Save admitted the NHS, they made I've heard mistakes. Yeah, Save exactly. The NHS. Protect, Protect the, NHS. the NHS. No, I mean, don't let it get overwhelmed by no. monkeypox. There is someone oh, on the planet that has saved the NHS tattooed on their backside. Oh, I'm sure there is. I'm yeah. sure there is. They probably work in the Department of Health. Um, <laughs> Kevin, who's your first one? Uh, it is the uh, boss of the uh, RN. 
RMT union. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, of course, the Transport Workers Union. Yeah. Uh, Mick Lynch, yes. he earns £124,000 run, running the biggest transport union in the country. Uh. He has 40,000 members and uh, he fully intends to take them out uh, this summer on the biggest... Uh, transport strike we've ever seen in this country. Everything will grind to a halt. Mm. He's beginning to make slight concessions about freight trains because you're talking about vital medical yeah. supplies, yeah. food supplies getting around the country. Uh, but it looks as if aeroplanes, ships, uh, trains, nothing is going to move mm. come the late summer. Uh, and this guy, this isn't to do with the conditions of work. Not at he all. wants a 10% pay rise for all train drivers. They're on 59 grand a year anyway. Minimum. Yeah, they're hardly uh, doing Some of them are making yeah, 80 that's double grand. minimum work. And they're still droning on about the uh, absolute necessity for a guard on yes. every train. You don't need guards. They're making on out every it's train. about yeah. health and safety yeah, when it yeah. isn't, is it? That's what unions always do that. It's always about health and safety. Yeah. It's never about pay. But what it's really about, is A, pay, mm. and B, the chance to disrupt the Tory government. Can I government. just ask, is this yeah. man French by any chance? No, but he is a communist, and apparently oh, okay. he has got a bit... He wants to off. destroy... He wants to, to make the Tory government look shambolic throughout yeah. the summer for political reasons. This is nothing to do with the conditions no. that his members... And they're also know? responsible, are they not, for the tube... People yeah, who are going to go on strike the tube, on the, well, the, the, the day line. after yeah, the platform the, jubilee yeah. party. Well, not only the day after, but they're going to shut down certain things yeah. during the, uh, the, the yeah. bank holiday, well, Thursday, Friday celebrations for the jubilee because they don't like the Queen. But that's they're what they do, right? They're going to close Green Park Station, which is the nearest station to the Buckingham the Palace. Palace. Yeah, yeah uh, and uh, you know th these people, they're, they're politically motivated. And just like Arthur Scargill a generation ago, uh, this guy, uh, Mick Lynch, is leading his members towards a kind of Armageddon yeah. for workers' rights because yeah. the government, if he's going to do this, will have no choice but to, to crack down on their right to strike because they cannot let this happen. Mm. So Mick Lynch is probably going to end up taking the workers of this country back up 50 years uh, by getting rid of their right to strike because the government will have to quash it. You know what's really funny? I went to um, see Margaret Thatcher's staff yesterday in Grantham and there was How a lady was it? it was great was actually it covered in egg? Yeah. well it was part of it was boarded up at the bottom because of the obviously the egg throws <laughs> Free but there omelets. was a I know <laughs> but there was an old lady that walked up to me and she said isn't this great and I was like oh wow I didn't think anyone in Grantham would appreciate this but like a few people actually came up to me yeah. and said this is amazing and I just thought this woman would be horrified if she was alive today yeah. to see what's going on, especially, oh, well, with the Tory party, but especially now with the unions yeah. and all of that. Well, she'd be busting them right there. Also, the lots of people in Grantham are very proud of the fact that the greatest prime minister of the 20th century yeah. uh, was born. And well, you wouldn't raised, know that from the yeah. news, right? Well, it's yeah, nice but, to be famous for of, something. Yeah, I mean, people, people of Grantham are proud of Thatcher. Yeah. Yeah. Millions of people around this country really appreciate Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, she actually did. did more for the working class than Labour well, I mean, doing now. I mean, Kevin and I were old enough to remember the yeah. 70s were like yeah, before yeah. she got in it was a nightmare you couldn't yeah, do anything yeah, yeah. nobody was was working the times newspaper didn't print for an entire year yeah. because the print she unions were on, were on yeah. strike she, saved she totally saved it but you know that's another that's another story for another day i'll go with hsbc uh, okay. for the first uh, plank for me uh, this is the bank that decided to suspend one of its quite senior uh, bankers because he had the temerity to question the, uh, the the wisdom of the climate change nutters, yeah, exactly. as he liked to call them. Mm. Uh, he had his speech prepared. He ran it through the senior management. They all seemed to be happy about it. But he basically said that an awful lot of what the climate change lobby says about the financial damage that's being done because he's in banking uh, is actually wrong most of the time. Um, and somebody complained, and he's been suspended. It seems extraordinary that now you I mean, can't even question because he's fact in charge. Of, he's in charge of special lending mm. uh, for green purposes yes. at HSBC. Uh, and as he quite rightly said, he not, he not only said that the financial predictions, the apocalyptic predictions, are always wrong, mm. but so are the scientific yes. predictions. But they're models, aren't they? They're the models. Models, yeah. models are not exact. It's the same thing with the whole COVID well, or crisis, indeed right? Accurate. So, exactly. And I think I think one of the things that's most telling about these climate activists is they can never justify why oh actually we're supposed to be underwater mm. before the year 2000 then 2000 happened then yeah. 2010 yeah. 2020 and prince charles is yeah. guilty of this as well and we're still here yeah so well, it's I... like the covid modelers who now, who now say well you should be glad that the model that we said might happen didn't happen because yeah. uh, fewer people died so well, they're yeah. going to say the same thing well you should be glad that london's not underwater we yeah. got that wrong but isn't it great that we got it wrong but these well, are the, no, thing. These not, are the only people that can get things wrong and have zero consequences yeah. and expect us to keep trusting I know. them and he, but you know what this guy is doing is expressing his opinion yeah 
Uh, God perfectly forbid. valid it's opinion. Perfectly valid opinion. Uh, and uh, for that, Evidence HSBC based. have suspended him and his job's in big trouble yeah. because he said what he thought. Yeah. This is uh, an affront to freedom of it speech. It really is. It's incredible. And it's not just the public sector anymore, it's private sector as well. So who's your second one? My second one is Angela Rayner. <laughs> uh, the, the, the classiest of them all. Um, because <laughs> Don't put a word in between. Angela Rayner. Angela Rayner. <laughs> Sorry, scum. <laughs> Sorry, scum. I mean, <laughs> just, just do just, one. Just for si simply, I don't know. Not very, she's a great statesman. Not very Chilean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, really fantastic. Never in the field of human conflict. Be, just do one. Striding the political. Thank you. Know. Just do one. She should be the new Nike spokesperson. Yeah. Just Somebody do. Somebody put the just Nike do it, just, do just, do just, just do one. Just do one. Yeah. Um, so she uh, retweeted Rishi Sunak's tweet about yes. a news, uh, Westminster news, a news newsletter, from the treasury, and yeah. she just said in classy fashion, just do one. Yeah. Now, the reason why this is so ridiculous is because this isn't the first time she comes out with things like this, right. calling Tories scum and all of right. these. And I just think there is a certain level of etiquette that we should expect and, and public conduct from our MPs, right? You hear someone in the Commons, you know, I don't know, being suspended on allegations yeah. of sexual misconduct, right? Yeah. And the whole world blows up. But she gets to behave like a complete chav. Yeah. And representing this country, and no one says anything. No. And I just think it's ridiculous. Because I you think... can't criticise her for being a woman, exactly. or for being a northerner, uh, or for and being God forthright. And God you think she's hot. Oh, no. I no. find her distracting, Actually, which I don't certainly think. don't think that. No, um, we certainly don't think that. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, different strokes for different folks. But I just think it's so it's so tacky. It How really can you is. possibly behave it that way? It does detract. You're a grown woman. It does detract, doesn't it, from the job that she's supposed to be doing as well. And I'm, and I'm not saying Labour's image is great, right? They, <laughs> their leadership is Keir Starmer. But, I just, you know, this doesn't help. It really doesn't. I mean, it's one thing to have a colourful character as a number two. Yeah. But, you know, it's supposed to be colourful good, not colourful bad. I, I just think it's so, 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 so embarrassing. It I can't is. believe she gets away with The only thing like I would that. say about her is that uh, Labour may fairly soon have an epiphany and say, hey, should we have a woman as a leader? God forbid. Ooh, I don't know about that. Well, they don't know and what a woman is, though. I've got another... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I've got... An, yeah, they don't we're know what a woman is. We here's, another one. One. here's another idea that the Labour, Labour Party might want to think about at one time, the party of the working class. Mm. How about having a leader? Who's from the working yeah, class? There's an who idea. didn't go to Oxford and Cambridge? Yeah. Who didn't go to a public school? How about that? What do you mean? So yeah. in, the, Angela in, in, in that respect, God forbid. no. In that respect, Angela Rayner would be pretty good for Labour. Yeah, I think she'd probably be better than Starmer. But imagine if she actually. I might, I'm throwing up in my mouth just thinking about this. Imagine if she became prime minister. <laughs> oh God. And she was representing the United Kingdom with our allies, mm. going to the US, going to France, going to all these places and just yeah. saying, ah, you know, you can just do one. I'm just like, oh, yeah, God, that's not, so uh, embarrassing. It's not something you want to think about. Yeah. So embarrassing. Kevin, your second? Uh, Prince Andrew. He hasn't been in it for a uh, who, while. Who, uh, What's he been doing? Who doesn't he's seem like to be a, reading the room very well. He's like a Hall of Fame <laughs> yeah, flanker, isn't he? He, is, he really uh, is. Well, but this time, he is definitely on a campaign uh, mm -hmm. to rehabilitate himself, yeah. for us to forget that he's had to pay out millions and millions of pounds to stop a To a woman he doesn't know. That may well, never have, established never that, yeah, may well have established that he's a sexual predator, <laughs> uh, to say the least. Uh, so I mean, OK, even if, even if we put that aside... Yeah. Well, you can't really put that <laughs> aside. It's the if sort he, of central if, to his problem, really. <laughs> yeah. if you Apart from all that sex yeah. scandal, yeah, yeah. everything's fine. Never mind the Epstein that, connection. Yeah. It's the fact that he was friends with a known convicted right. well, paedophile. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, I, you can say whatever you want yeah. about the sexual allegations. She was of age, whatever. You were friends with a known... Oh my God! Well, yeah, but, but I mean, the man's got no judgment. The, and the point is that, is, is that so what's he it? done this week? That yeah. lack of judgment has led to him feeling that he can rehabilitate himself and somehow uh, restore himself as a front line royal performing all the duties. So uh, with a view to that, on uh, June the 13th at Windsor Castle, uh, there's a, a thing called the Parade of the Garter, mm -hmm. where all the uh, people who have uh, the Order of the Garter. Uh, gather and they do this sort of parade through the castle grounds. The Queen is obviously unlikely to lead it this year for health reasons. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they'll all be there in all their finery and he'll be at the front of the queue. Mm. Uh, and he's he's actually entitled to do it because he is a member of the Order of the Garden. He just hasn't got a clue, But, has but, but yeah. the Queen should tell him, no, 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 you can't do this. Mm. You're not in the game anymore. You know uh, what he should has happen to be to told him? to go away. He needs to be put in either in a crypt mm. or in the caves of Paris 
and he needs to be kept there. Yeah. I don't care what fineries they have yeah, with him. He can make him as comfortable as possible. Put him in a hole in the yeah. ground yeah. Right. and make sure the public don't It's like that guy him. turns up at parties yeah. and he's just come out of prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? And he's going, what guys do you know? Why is everybody looking at me? You know, uh, what's going on? Well, they well you have like a few tattoos everywhere. Funny, yeah, exactly right. But I wouldn't criticise a mother's love, and particularly uh, not Her Majesty's mother's love, uh, but she is definitely looking at her second son through rose-coloured yeah, spectacles. I think so. She thinks he can be restored, rehabilitated. She's wrong. He can't be, and she, he should not be at the Order of the Garter. He needs to be in a dungeon somewhere. He really does. 13. Yeah, maybe he thought it was a different kind of garter ceremony he was going to. Yeah, yeah. You know, like the ones they do at Spearmint Ooh, Rhino. garter, you say. You know, yeah, yeah, that's well. what he was thinking. But anyway, my second one... Uh, it's going to be some, somebody called Superintendent Sarah Derbyshire. Now, you might not be familiar with that name, but mm. there's been a lot of football pitch invasions in the past week or so. I've noticed. Some of them have resulted in, in footballers and managers getting uh, attacked. Uh, some people have been injured. One mm. guy, I think Sheffield United's captain, was uh, had to be taken to hospital to get some uh, stitches put in. It turns out that Superintendent Sarah Derbyshire is a football fan. Uh, she is a Bournemouth fan, in fact, and they played Nottingham Forest <laughs> yeah, at I the beginning of May. Um, <laughs> And they got themselves the result they were looking for. Yeah. So she yeah. and two other serving police officers from the Dorset Police decided it'd be a great idea to invade the pitch as well. And they've been spotted on CCTV cameras actually taking part in what is an illegal act because invading the football pitch is an illegal act. Were they under the influence of alcohol? Well, they were very excited, it okay. says in the, in the piece I read in The Sun. Well, they just um, got promoted. And they, I can't they, imagine yeah, they what else they promoted. do when they're excited. Well, imagine that. And so apparently uh, the good news, though, for them is that uh, Dorset Police are not taking the matter any further. Okay. Uh, they've simply asked them to reflect on what they did, which apparently is now the this new... Is the, this, is yeah. this is now the new police To meditate, well, no, to, so to be mindful. Reflect. Yeah, exactly. So don't, don't worry about, like, demoting them, don't fine them, don't give them any kind of criminal um, charge, just reflect. Mm. So the next time anybody gets into trouble, you know, presumably you can just go... How well, are they going to reflect on... A, like, they should, you know they should reflect on a paid holiday. They should reflect on an unpaid holiday. Yes. I, I don't think that's how this works. Forever. Yeah, that, I would that's say, almost like a punishment. I would Mike. say what are you go, go, about? go home and you will work from home for no money for a month or something like that. But it's ridiculous. That's, I mean, they've literally the broken though. the law. You Look, don't realise this is not how it works. You don't get punished for breaking the law. Really? You, you get you 56 did. quid fine if you're in Downing Street. Well, but you, but yeah, you didn't break the law, though. Yeah. You just, it wasn't you a party, it. you see. It wasn't a party. It wasn't really well, the law. I guess the other one was. That was his birthday what? party. How did this country become so it's screwed up? It's ridiculous. Nothing actually <laughs> it's worked. It's so embarrassing, right? honestly. It is totally ridiculous. Before I ask you for your third one, I will also mention uh, that I carry over once more Harry and Meghan. Of course. This week's um, I think ablutions. They, they and Prince Andrew are like the Hall of Fame. They really are. I mean, I do sometimes worry about carrying somebody else over, but it's always Harry and Meghan because there's well, always Sadiq something... Well, Sadiq Khan, he's like a constant. Sadiq isn't he? Khan is a constant, although he hasn't done anything terrible this week, I don't think. And just wait for the Elizabeth line. He was Didn't on it. Go he was over on, budget well, as well. He was on last week. Well, the Elizabeth line was over budget mm. uh, by four and it billion. It broke down this and, and oh, today, broke down. No, today they had to evacuate Paddington yeah, Station. Yeah, it broke yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. Five hundred people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Within two hours. But with Harry and, <laughs> Harry and Meghan this it's week... It's gone wrong. Harry and Meghan this week, it's more Meghan than Harry. Harry was playing in one of those polo matches that he likes to play in because he's, he's all about inclusivity. You exactly. Know? And, of course... And he's a working-class lad. Everybody, he's a working-class lad. It's he's all about, people's sport. It's all about equality, right? Yeah. So not only was he a plank for doing that, but they won the tournament, whatever it was, right? I don't know how many teams are in it. And Meghan sort of wanders up to the place where, you know, they have that sort of, yeah. you know, the, 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 the stand where you get handed the trophy. And she just sort of mixes right in with the team mm -hmm. and sort of plants herself right in the middle oh, no. and stands there looking completely out, out of place because everyone else is wearing a sort of uniform yeah. to play. And she tries, first of all, to grab the sort of the free gift that one of the guys is holding to take for herself. He doesn't let it go, so she's kind of doing this. <laughs> and then she tries to get her hands on the cup and they're trying to pass the cup. And she's just standing there and kind of being in the picture. I think she's... It's the, like, the, can I be in the picture? No such self, she has no self-awareness. No. Well, if she was there to watch Harry, why didn't she just watch Harry? Just watch why did she Harry. have to go on exactly. stage with the Because she can't bear to see a camera that's not pointed at her, I think. I think she, it has, actually... she has a vulgarity problem. Yes. Yeah, I think, I that's, think right. that's, that's probably... What's that hat she's wearing with the great net? Oh, I, I know. know. What's that about? I, I think that's probably why she struggled in the royal family as well, because order and propriety yeah. and all of these things are very much lost And you can't her. just shove yourself into the she's picture. Exactly. Well, like so many Americans, she struggled to see the difference between celebrity being, shall yeah, we say, public duty. a big Hollywood movie star mm. and being a member of the royal family. And the being British effectively royal a public There's a big service. difference. Yeah. Americans yeah. never quite see it. They no. think, they think sort of the members 
members of the royal family have got agents. Yeah. And, uh, well, they see everybody in the world of celebrity yeah. as the same. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah you can be a celebrity point, for, yeah. for being a serial killer, yeah. or you can be a celebrity yeah. for being in a movie. But the thing is, they Either have a tolerance the, the royal for these things. Royal members of the royal family are not celebrities. No. But they have a tolerance for celebrities that think that they are above, the, like on top of the world. They don't understand that in British yeah, society, we would have no tolerance for that. Exactly. They have no idea how the royal family works. They have no idea of the kind of fame that the royal family members have got. And, right. and, uh, that they've worked and for. Megan still doesn't get it. Yeah. She yeah. still doesn't get it. That's, I mean, that's why she did that tacky Oprah interview, because yeah. she was exactly. expecting this thousand-year institution to yeah. bow to yeah. her. Yeah. And, because, and then she played the race card, yeah. Puerto Rican as she may be. And I still maintain that. <laughs> and it just didn't work. Um, so I, yeah, I just don't think she gets it. She does not get no. it. And I don't no. think Harry has bothered to educate. I mean, she didn't even know the national anthem when she came here. No. And I just thought, right, you clearly, there's a disconnect. I mean, you can't really quite believe that it all happened the way that it did. But, yeah. but unfortunately, it did. So who's your third? My third is, and this is, there's a well deserved plank, the Church of England. Yes. Um, for what happened to Calvin Robinson, who I know who's lovely, because they refused to make him mm. a priest. Yes. He's a trainee vicar, and these white liberals in the Church of England sort of hierarchy refused. Is he not right? black enough? Yeah, well, well, apparently, because he doesn't see racism at every corner, right. they decided to tell this half black individual what they, as white liberals, thought of the state Amazing. of racism in this country. Yeah. And I, I think not only is this so off putting for people that are joining the sinking ship, which is the Church of England, right? No, the church yeah. attendance is through the floor. I mean, you know, the membership keeps dropping and dropping. But I also think it's so insidious and it's so horrible because this is someone who's worked for this. It's not like they have like an overflow of young men trying to not become really. <laughs> trying not to become really. trainee. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're not going to go to wear the spoons and be like, hey, wanna... <laughs> exactly. Does anyone want to become a trainee vicar and wear the spoons? Not really. They're all, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so so his crime, though, his crime is is, is to be too right wing. Is, 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 is that is refusing to accept that the Church of England is institutionally racist. racist. And right. for speaking he on his said, lived I don't experience. see that. Right. I don't see it ever. So what these uh, white middle class people in the Church of England don't like about Calvin Robinson uh, is that they are they demand that mm. we all accept yes. that the C of E is uh, institutionally racist the and Britain so is, is the whole country. Yeah. Yeah, if you exactly. say, well, I don't think it is, uh, then that's unacceptable you're out. to them. Exactly, especially <laughs> if and you're black. And, he's, and he's a black guy, for yeah, Christ. But, I mean, yeah, exactly, for not peddling the narrative. Absolutely mad. Same vein of people, because I always get, I used to get, oh, don't you get offended when people ask you, where are you from? Because I was supposed to, you know, shut up. I'm like, do I look like I'm from the Scottish Highlands? Right. C c clearly, my ancestors look like they come from a hot place that's not Britain. Right. right? But I'm supposed to be really offended I by I thought you were from North London. Yeah, that's <laughs> well, to be honest. Well, yeah. well, that's I'm, normally where you yeah. come from. I, I mean, yeah, but yeah. I had to... to One of us. To, to I mean, we're all from else. North London. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> from I just... deepest Cam Camden. Yeah. I know. And Barnet. Yeah. But I just I just think it's so insidious and it's so horrible. And it's mm. the same thing with sort of KPMG. And yeah. they're, they're making it mandatory now for their, their employees to have unconscious bias training. Yes. And this is the whole and critical race theory. And you can't tell anybody you've been on holiday in case it upsets them. Well, yeah. If you... <laughs> especially if you've been skiing. I know. If, especially if you have the money to afford it. Because it might mean you're a bit privileged. Yeah. I mean, just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It it's, it's, it's critical race theory seeping in mm. to British institutions, you know, catalyzed by the, 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 the Marxist nightmare that was BLM. Yeah. And now it's really, really shaking up the foundations mm. of this country. Yeah. For, for you to tell, because he's they're literally validating his lived experience, yeah. right? And I think there are many people in this country, if it was so, such a racist hellhole, people, the people wouldn't come here. They certainly uh, yeah, wouldn't come they, here by they, dinghies. No, by dinghies, exactly right. Kevin, your final one? My third one uh, is Lord Hogan Howe, oh, yes. previously Sir Bernard Hogan yes. Howe, previously before that Bernard Hogan <laughs> Howe. Uh, if you go back in the annals of time, you will, midst of time, yeah. you'll find Bernard without a title. Yes. Uh, but he was, of course, the uh, Met police chief before Cressida Dick, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and he made an absolute screw-up. Dog's breakfast. A total mess of it. Mm. This is the guy that when uh, idiots from Operation Midland went running in and said, hey, Bernard, uh, we've got evidence that... Uh Ted Heath and Harvey Proctor and Lord Bramall and Leon Britton have been murdering children and having sex with them. It's a paedophile VIP ring. Have you got any evidence? No, but we're pretty certain it's true. <laughs> a Bernard. Right, let's Ruined spend, people's let's spend lives. millions and millions Public of pounds money. of taxpayers' money ah. on this complete waste of space, which he promptly did. Mm. The biggest fiasco that even Scotland Yard has ever uh, foisted upon an unsuspecting nation. 
situation. Uh, that guy <laughs> messed it up from time and time and time again. He's the one who's responsible uh, for, you know, for or was in charge of the Met Police when the uh, helicopters flew over yeah. uh, mm. Cliff Richard's place. He was the one who came up with this mm. system of hanging celebrities out to dry, telling the newspapers, oh, we think, we think he might be a pedo. Put him on the front page. Oh, Let's see yeah. who salutes. It was a terrible Shocking. system. He was a terrible Met Police and chief. he was also responsible for bringing Krista Dickens. Yeah, he? yeah. He, 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 yeah. Yeah. Fantastic legacy. Yeah, the only thing you could say about Bernard Howe, uh, Hogan Howe is he might not have been quite as catastrophically bad as Cressida Dick, but he mm. was pretty damn true. But he's bad. now they're making, the point they're is, making the point him crime is, commissioner is now, or something? is that now this guy thinks he's qualified to be head of the National Crime Agency, for which he will be paid uh, £225,000 a year, Brilliant. and Boris Johnson is backing him all the way. Lee, get this guy out of our lives. He's useless. Yeah. Why, why does he think that he is qualified to do this but when he's made such a mess of everything in the really is. Isn't there an independent it's commission ridiculous. that should be overlooking this? Like, I don't know, looking at your well, track record and well, seeing how Well, he's been rejected before, but he's back in the frame yeah. and he's got the Prime Minister's backing because Boris used to work with him a lot when he was Mayor of London mm, yeah. and Bernard Hogan There's only Howe one question to ask. Issue. Lord Hogan, how does he get these jobs? Yeah, Lord oh, Hogan, God. how? Sorry, it, uh, really? waited a long time for that. Oh, no. Yeah, but Bernard hyphen <laughs> how. Uh, yeah, so he's useless. Uh, he has ideas <laughs> above his station. He thinks right. he should have this top job. And for that, he is a complete plank because he I doesn't, say, he doesn't he deserve to sweep the streets, let alone run the National no. Crime well, Agency. There is, I find, and this is very unrelated, Hogan is a very unsexy name. Hogan, yeah. Yeah, there's like no... Hulk Hogan. Hogan. Yeah, but that's Hogan, different. Hogan. There's, Hogan. there's Hulk, you see. <laughs> if he just called himself Hulk, it'd even be Hulk. Nice. Would but be Hogan, better. it just sounds like. Well, Hogan's a very like well-used name. Hogan's Heroes, that. yeah. Hogan's mm. Heroes, Dave Hogan. No, it's very unsexy. Oh, I've well. never well, heard of women well, moaning. It's not really the Hogan. point. I'm going to go yeah. in because of his I know, name. Anyway, listen, I know, it's that's very not fault. How is quite a funny thing to make fun of, but not Hogan. Anyway, How my, Hogan, yeah. How Hogan. Uh, my last one is the NHS again. Um, okay. Because uh, <laughs> they're in it a lot at the moment because their latest idea is to suggest that uh, the cancer consultants should not bother going into hospitals and they should actually work from home and instead what, what the people who work in the hospitals should do who are the sort of clinical um, administrators they should be screening people for cancer mm. because it's a waste of their time and they could be much better off doing other things and it's like well if they're much better off doing other things, surely those other things should be operating on people yeah. in the hospital, not working from home yeah. and telling people what they think. So they've missed, they've missed hundreds of thousands of cancer cases yeah. over the uh, period of the pandemic, and now they're hoping to miss even more. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's they that's could that's actually start finding it's, it's, You can't it's, it's make the stuff up. Yeah. Quite an incredible way to sort of shorten the length of yeah. time you wait for a cancer treatment yeah. uh, is to make sure that there aren't any cancer surgeons actually available to do the well, treatment. Well, there are many people that are going private or going to the US. Well, most people for cancer are going treatment. private yeah. because they have to. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, even after 10 years ago, most people went to the US. Yeah. They'd go to, like, the flood New York hospitals with sort of British cancer yeah. patients because the NHS waitlist was just oh, incredible. I, just I don't think people understand how bad it is. I think the waitlist now is up to two years. Oh, it's more than that. And the rest. No, it's about six. And the rest. six years for some. Oh, Sajid Javid said they won't even begin to get to grips with it until yeah. 2024. It's unbelievable. We're well, nearly it's out of time, guys. It's going to peak at 2024. So we need, to, we, need to, we need to race to the uh, finish line here. So give us your three mm -hmm. and Kevin will pick one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. so my three are Boris, obviously, Angela Rayner, yeah. the, the sexy, classy lady she always is, and the Church of England. So, Kevin? Um, I Mick him the... Uh... No, I mean, you have to pick her. Uh, oh, right, sorry, say it again. Boris, Angela Rayner, Church of England. Oh, I think I'm going to go for uh, Angela Rayner. Angela Rayner's a good choice. Yeah. Uh, you, your three uh, are... My, my three were, were uh, the boss of the RMT, yeah. Mick Hume, who's on 124 grand a year. Then uh, Prince Andrew for trying to re-establish himself as a front-line royal when he doesn't deserve it. And finally, uh, Lord Hogan Howe oh, yes. for thinking he should uh, once again hold a top crime-fighting position when he shouldn't. I think it's going to be Mick Lynch, because I think he's going to be public enemy number one by the time the summer yeah. comes around, the yeah. RMT guy, right? So my three, uh, HSBC, mm -hmm. Superintendent Sarah Derbyshire, uh, the football hooligan, and the NHS. HSBC, it's probably a bad thing. HSBC, yeah. okay. HSBC, so what do we have? HSBC, so we have HSBC Angela Rayner. Angela Rayner, and uh, the Mick, uh, RMT man, Mick Lynch. Mick, Mick Lynch. Lynch, yeah. What he should, do we think? He should be Mick Lynched. <laughs> yeah. <Well. laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. My, my, I mean, my feeling is because uh, this is the upcoming big problem that we've got. Mick Lynch needs to be uh, uh, 
uh, headed off at the pass. I think he does. He he's about to ruin a lot of people's summer. Well, do you know yeah. what's going to happen? Is they'll, do the us, they'll do the usual thing where um, they, you say they've got 40,000 members 40, of the RMC members, yeah. and they cover all industries and yeah, travel. Yeah, you, you're talking about ships, ships. you're talking about yeah. planes, you're talking about trains. But I bet you any money, again, they'll have this rule where if only 50,000, or sorry, if only 20,000 of them actually bother to vote, mm. they'll take a majority yeah, yeah. of that, which is not a majority yeah. of the actual union members, mm. and they'll strike anyway. Well, they're going to clamp down on striking rights, aren't they? This guy's going to cause untold misery yeah, for exactly. millions of people. Yes. I think he's pushing it. I think he's really, really pushing the limit as well so because there's we so many with, um, industries that Should we suffered. go with Mick Lynch as the plank of the week then? I think so, think? yeah. I think so, yeah. And then Why did they egg two? his house? Why did they egg Margaret Thatcher's statue? You should go egg his house. Well, I mean, I don't think we should encourage people to egg anybody's house, yes, should we? Yeah, I'm not saying find his house and go egg it. No. That's, one of the, that's the sort of thing the lefties do. You see, we... we I'm we, not we, saying that at all. No, good. Um, HSBC... Or Angela Rayner for number two. I think Angela Rayner. Uh, yep. Yeah. Because, you know... Just, just tacky behaviour. Just just clean it up, Angela. Yeah. You know, just... Wash your mouth out with soap, ma'am. Yeah, just wash yeah. your mouth out with soap. And then, finally, HSBC. Yeah. I mean, didn't they used to call themselves something... The, the, like, the Midland Bank. The Midland Bank. But weren't they the listening bank or something they used to do? Have they heard no, how I people from the Midlands bank, talk? Uh, yeah. If they're worried about this being unpolitically correct, they need to stand in Birmingham City Centre and see what... I mean, <laughs> it's a guy's opinion, and there's a lot of justification yeah, for his opinion. Absolutely yeah. right. And uh, they think they've got the right to quash his freedom of I know, speech. Absolutely rubbish. shocking. Well, thank you guys, Esther thank you. and Kevin. Uh, plank of the week, very, very well deserved this week, uh, because he's going to be a plank, I think, throughout the course of the summer. It is the RMT boss, the union leader, Mick Lynch. We'll see you next time.